What is up? Crusader Kings 3 is here. Woo! Woo! Crusader Kings 2 is one of my top 10 favorite games of all time. It's a brilliant, a brilliant masterpiece. Hopefully this isn't too simplified. Nope. My my concerns have already been quelled because it is a deep strategy game. If you're new to the world of Crusader Kings, we strongly recommend you play the tutorial. We will play as Petty King Murchad, Murchad, a ruler in Ireland. Lead your family and dynasty to defeat your enemies and become king of Ireland. Do I want to play the tutorial? Not really. Not really. Shall I do it anyways, just because? Eh. Fine. I, why am I doing the tutorial? I know how to fucking play Crusader Kings. Why am I wasting my goddamn time? We'll see how this goes. I might quit and just start a new game here. I'm a medieval ruler. Land is yours for the taking, though clever marriages and diplom- Oh, through clever marriages and diplomacy. Or by way of the sword. Yeah, 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 da, da, da. Over hundreds of years and many generations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The duchy is the title. Pass the duchy to the left one time. Pass the duchy to the left. Below a kingdom and above a county. Below a duchy and above a barony. Barony is the lowest. I did that. Hover over the highlighted phrase inside the. Yay. I did good. Now let's talk about the game. Everything takes place on the map before you. The world consists of large and small pieces of land, each belonging to someone based on their titles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, if you click your character, your realm capital lights up. Outside of that will be the realm borders of your entire realm. Munster is your primary title. Oh, the Munsters. I hold the earldom of... Thomond. As a ruler, you can only hold so much land on your own. You'll often have other rulers helping with the administration of the realm by holding land within your borders, making them your vassals. Now one thing, I played Crusader Kings for years, and maybe this makes me a dumbass, but for the life of me, I could never ever figure out. I probably should have looked this up instead of just... Anyways. I hate vassals, so if I have too many, too much land or something, and I would appoint one of my vassals to rule over one of the countries for me, I would always end up losing that land. I could never figure that shit out. How the hell do I get it back? I don't want to just give away my land, but when he would die, if my vassal would die, someone else would take it over and it would no longer belong to me. I don't, I never ever figured that out for some reason, which probably, now that I'm saying it, Probably does make me a dumbass. I swear I'm not usually a dumbass, but for some reason I never got the swing of that. As a ruler, you can only hold so much land on your own. You already read that. You're playing as one out of many characters. Blah, blah, blah. Ruler of around. Make sure your dynasty survives. Your titles give you power and control. Blah, blah, blah. Click on your character. Boop. I know the skills. So diplomacy controls so how much land you have, how much other characters like you, blah, blah, blah. 
Marshal is war and combat stuff. Stewardship is like how much you get in taxes and whatnot. Uh, da, 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 da. Intrigue is like plotting to kill people and finding plots against you. Learning is like, uh, I think like religious shit. Yeah, piety. Piety. Sorry, my sinuses are absolutely killing me. I knew I shouldn't have snorted all that crocodile before I started. Characters also have traits which can affect skills as well as how they react to things. These are illustrated by icons in your character view. Some traits tell you about a character's personality, like fickle, calm, or generous. Other traits are specific to how a character has lived their life, such as your education trait or commander traits. I am temperate. I am wrathful. Plus three martial, minus one diplomacy, minus one intrigue. And impatient. Wait, how can you be temperate and impatient? Anyways. From this, you can see that your character typically lives a modest life, but expects others to do so also, and is quick to anger when they don't. And you won't like him when he's angry. When a character chooses to behave against their personality traits, it can cause stress. That's new. I don't remember stress being in the last one. Traits can also impact how other characters react to you. Some people are impressed by the brave traits, while a lustful character is more likely to feature in salacious gossip. We all love salacious and gossip. All characters have an opinion of one another which drives their behavior. Low opinion, cause them to rise against you, or unwilling to help you. High opinion, make them more inclined to join your murder scheme, or fall for your seduction. I want to play! You'll need gold. Gold pays for buildings, armies, bribes. Gold is collected from your holdings and your vassals as tax. Larger vassals and more important holdings tend to give more tax. However, money is not all. Certain things can only be achieved by spending the right amount of prestige, or, for religious matters, piety. Your prestige tells us how respected you are. So I probably have very low prestige. Oh, I have 600. It can be earned over time by holding lots of titles. Every time I see titles, I, for some reason my brain wants to say titties. And I already apolo I apologize, even though I haven't actually said that and I didn't need to admit that. I don't know what's wrong with me today. Such as by marrying, da, 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 da. Whenever you earn prestige, you build towards your next level of fame. Higher levels of fame make other characters think better of you and bring powerful ways to wage war. Uh, some things cost prestige, like declaring war. With a lot of piety, you will have an easier time interacting with your head of faith. As you are a Catholic, boo! Sorry, this is the Pope. Piety can be gained passively from the learning skill and from virtuous traits, or actively from choosing to do religious things, such as going on a pilgrimage. You also have a level of devotion. You've got me feeling devotion. Higher than Mariah. Which builds over time when you gain piety and can have positive effects. Similar to prestige. Da -da 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 -da. I want to play! Jesus Christ, yes, I know, you can pick lifestyles, da da da. I don't see the lifestyle button. Click the lifestyle button, highlight it, oh, there we go. Click on any lifestyle to see its focuses. As time goes by, your character will earn lifestyle experience for maintaining a particular lifestyle. When you acquire enough lifestyle experience, you can select one of that lifestyle's perks from any of its trees. I got trees coming from overseas. Perks represent you practicing and developing yourself over time and offer unique bonuses or unlocks lifestyle specific mechanics and content. <coughs> <laughs> Such as the ability to start abduction schemes. Oh my god, I can't breathe. Alright, yeah, I know all this stuff. I want to play, man. Alright, I like taxes. Ooh, I gained, because of my martial experience, I would gain 30% more martial. But I like gold. I want to be... A supermodel. I want to be a steward. War, honor, and loyalty are all means to an end. Gold. 
plus 10% monthly income. My land and the people under my care are my strength, plus 3 stewardship. The bonds of loyalty that bind us do not constrict, they show the way. Stewardship plus 1, enemy agent acceptance minus 5, career opinion plus da 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 da. Uh, I like gold. Wait, what is my stewardship? Nine? That's not bad. Ooh, maybe I should try to balance out my diplomacy. No. Hey. Um. I have really low diplomacy, so even though I'd rather get gold, I might do this. Ooh, and fertility. I'll have more kids. Yes. Plus two diplomacy, plus fertility. Having kids and having and uh, having kids and appointing a guardian so that they'll grow up to be semi competent in various uh, statistics is of the utmost importance in this game. I spent the overwhelmingly vast majority of my time in Crusader Kings 2 poking around the map trying to find good good um potential marriage partners for my children that had good stats and that would accept a marriage or in the case of my daughters a matrilineal marriage which means that their kids will stay in your family you know normally in medieval times uh say my daughter is a princess she marries the prince of some other country they have kids those kids belong to that prince's country and a matrilineal marriage they belong to the princess's country. Uh, in order to get someone to agree to a matrilineal marriage, usually their country has to suck. If they're on like equal footing with you, they're gonna say, hell no, man, I want them kids. So yeah, what am I talking about? I understand. Now having selected a focus, you can we can move on to other people. If you're new to this game, interacting with other characters is key and you have many options how to do so. Open your character view, right click on your heir's portrait. Uh, da, 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 everyone likes gold, try sending them a gift. Brian McMurcod. 50 gold, goddamn, Brian. You grubby, greedy son of a bitch. There. Well done! You've successfully increased somebody's opinion of you. Certain opinion modifiers last, for, last forever, like family bonds. Others will wane over time. Wane. Like the fading memory of receiving a monetary gift. I never forget a monetary gift. That memory will never fade. If you hover over, you can see where the numbers are coming from. Alright, tutorial. I know this stuff. Why did I pick the freaking tutorial? Now let's talk about your dynasty. I just wanted to make sure nothing was, like, very different. As the game goes on, unless your character meets with an untimely accident or terrible disease, they'll grow old and eventually die. Spoiler alert, most of the time they're not going to grow old. They're going to die before that. The story doesn't end there. It's only game over if you don't have an heir of your own dynasty. As long as you have heirs, your legacy will live on. When your character dies, you start playing as a new one, the player heir. Depending on the type of succession your realm has, this is likely going to be one of your children. Perhaps that one that you groomed into the role of a ruler? Your dynasty has its own coat of arms, which is currently highlighted and can be clicked for more information. That's an ugly coat of arms. You don't need to do anything with this now, but if you want to look at the details of your dynasty later, it can be found here. Succession laws determine how all titles, how all titties, and resources are divided between the heirs when a character dies. You currently only have one heir. But let's take a look anyway. In some cases, when you take over your new character, you may even find that they're responsible for the untimely demise of your previous ruler. Open the realm view on the right side of the screen. Inspect the succession tab. As a member of a dynasty, you also have renown, shared by everyone in your dynasty. Renown goes up whenever anyone in your dynasty gets prestige and reflects how infamous famous your family is rather than just you. 
making significant strides in your renown will echo down the generations for your descendants, slowly increasing your level of splendor. Splendor is also a good game, which I highly recommend. The board game and the Steam version. Good game. As the dynasty head, the most powerful member of your dynasty, that's me, I'm the head, Renown will allow you to unlock Dynasty Legacies that will benefit all of you. Unlike Prestige, Renown remains after a character's death, da 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 da. I understand everything. To ensure the future of your Dynasty, you need family members. If you're married, we can't promise that you'll marry for love, da da da. Click on your character. Let's get married! Boo! Marriage is for the birds. For unmarried characters in your domain, you can set up marriages or betrothals by right-clicking on the character and choosing Find Spouse or Arrange Marriage. Oh man, come on. We don't have to go through them both. Find Spouse. Choosing Find Spouse opens a list of potential spouses. They hail from courts all over the world. Ooh, that's an improvement. Because unless... Uh, in, in Crusader Kings 2, if you did that, it would only show people in your own court. Which is why I had to sit there and click on every goddamn country in the map looking for a goddamn spouse. And it would take hours. And I don't even like, I don't even, marriage sucks. Boo, I didn't even want to do it. But I needed good kids. Hold on, I can't breathe, I need a tissue. I wanna be a supermodel. Sorry, I'm also watching Johnny Mnemonic, Keanu Reeves classic, based on a amazing story by William Gibson, who wrote Neuromancer, and invented. He he is the the progenitor. Is that even the right word I want to use? It sounds good. Of cyberpunk. He created cyberpunk, basically. Uh, um, what's the, the... Oh my god, my mind just went blank. A lot of the terms we use for like the internet and stuff, like uh, internet, I believe, uh, actually originate from William, Will, William Gibson stories and novels. Um, he predicted all that shit. All his stories are like hackers and and evil mega corporations and da 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 da. Excellent stuff. Neuromancer, amazing. Count Zero, amazing. Johnny Mnemonic, which is in a book of short stories called Burning Chrome, amazing. Some of the others, all right. Anyways, that has nothing to do with what I'm doing. I'm sorry. Alright, uh, choosing a range of marriage also opens a list of potential spouses, but only with people from the court of the character you clicked. Your own character is visible on the left because this marriage needs your approval. Whoever is the liege of other spouses will appear on the right. Arrange marriage, da 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 da, setting up fine spouse is more relevant for our purposes. Porpoises. That's more relevant for our porpoises and dolphins. Boo. There are many factors to consider when choosing a spouse. Um, measurements, agreeability, lack of promiscuity. Uh, to help you out, there's a filter available for sorting. Among things to consider, there are alliances, skills, personality traits, expected fertility, and more. Some traits are congenital, meaning that they might be inherited by your children. Perhaps someone with a trait like that is a good place to start. You can change your selection by clicking da 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 da, okay. When you've selected two people for your marriage, you're presented with the details of the union, along with additional options such as having the marriage be matrilineal, which again means that the kids belong to the woman's family and not the father's family. Uh, da da, get married, select a spouse, send a proposal, okay, how do I move this? Okay, so I want someone who's good at stuff. Cynical, compassionate, wrathful. Let's pick someone with good stewardship. Ooh, look at that. Saxon, Breton. Ooh, these ladies are good. 6, 4, 23, 4, 8. That's pretty good. 
Actually, this is better. She's low in Marshall, but who gives a shit about Marshall? She ain't gonna be fighting the wars for me. She's ambitious. She's humble. And stubborn. Alright, how old am I? I'm 39. I don't want to marry a 17-year-old. God damn. Uh, zero five seven. You suck. You kind of suck. You kind of suck. You kind of suck. This lady looks good. Twenty one. Lowborn. Uh. Are these all lowborn? No. I don't want a lowborn lass. Boy, options are somewhat limited. I believe if I marry someone who's lowborn, I lose a bunch of prestige. That's how it worked in the last one. Uh, zero diplomacy. Man. Impatient and calm. Those seem... Oh, look at that. Look at that coat of arms. A rainbow unicorn. I love it. Six, four, twenty. She seems good. Diligent, honest, stubborn. Sure, let's go with you. I'm only this is only the tutorial, why do I care? Greetings, Petty King Mercad of Munster. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. I accept your marriage proposal. Oh I'm I didn't mean to propose to you, buddy. Count Benno. You will be joined with my acquaintance Lisanne in holy matrimony. May Saint Brigid Brigid bless your union. Excellent. Oh, wait. What did I just do? Did I accidentally find a... Did I accidentally marry my dude instead of... Oops. That's not what I meant to do. I accidentally married my main dude instead of... My son. Oopsie. I don't think that's what I was supposed to do. Uh, let's try this again. I still want someone with good stewardship and decent intrigue Who's not lowborn who where's that 17 year old lady? Uh, well, I choose you Pikachu uh, da, 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 da. Brian Brian gets one minus 100 renown why and oh, whatever just a tutorial I gladly accept your son and heir, Brian, and my daughter, Marth, will be joined in a holy matrimony. May God grant them long life and many children. Excellent. May you live long and happily together and prosper. For this tutorial, we recommend you... Oh, I already did that. Family is important. The player heir will always come from your dynasty and most often from your house. It's The, the heir is coming from inside your house. In the future, it won't hurt to keep an eye on your family and their line of succession. Depending on their succession laws, you might end up inheriting titles along with land and vassals from your relatives. Not everyone in your dynasty will be landowners, but every plot of land on the map has an owner. Logic, logic puzzles. Sometimes that owner is you, sometimes it's one of your vassals, and sometimes it's another realm entirely. Most titles are structured together in a pyramid-like fashion using the title tier. County, duchy, kingdom, empire. Every tier belongs to a title one rank up the chain. Every county is technically part of a duchy. Every duchy is technically part of a kingdom. Every kingdom is technically part of an empire. There are many dynamic names for these titles as well. Your current ruler is in charge of a petty kingdom which corresponds to the duchy tier. There are also barons, the minor rulers of wasteland holdings beneath counts. These characters are generally quite minor and unplayable. You do have one, the mayor of Ennis. We say technically because as Crusader Kings lets you play with history, there's no way to guarantee that a king is actually in charge of all the titles that his kingdom is supposed to contain within its borders. We call this title hierarchy de jour. DiGiorno. And if the structure has been broken, it is often possible to declare a war over such territories. War! Huh. Good God, y'all. What is it good for? 
If you switch to the Duchy titles map mode, you can see that as the ruler of the Duchy of Munster, the County of Desmond should legally be part of your realm. Change to the Duchy. Pass the Duchy to the left one time. Pass the Duchy to the left. Return to realms. I don't see realms. Oh. I understand. The du jour title of Munster consists of three counties. Their names should be visible on the map. Thamond, held by you. Desmond, held by a neighboring ruler. And Ormond, held by your vassal. These counties are made up of smaller pieces of land called baronies. It is on this level we find your holdings. Holdings represent settlements in your land. Why did I play the tutorial, man? I know this shit. Holdings provide different levels of taxes and levies, as well as buildings you can construct and upgrade depending on the holding type. It's not very important that you build right now, but we suggest you start by upgrading the bastions and curtain walls. Click on Lumic. Uh, Bastion and... Oh man, this is way different. Please tell me this isn't all the building options. There used to be so many building options. Uh, okay. Uh, I'll have to poke around and see how much different it is. It looks a little more limited, but maybe it, the building construction thing looks significantly more limited than it was in Crusader Kings 2, but I might just not... Maybe it's buried under more uh, menus than it used to be. This, that might be misleading. Don't, don't cancel your purchase yet. What did it want me to do? Bastion the curtain walls. Fort level plus one, garrison plus 150, upgrade. Three years, goddamn, son. Every holding provides taxes to their holder. If that holder is a vassal, they'll also pay taxes to their liege. Taxes provide your main income of gold. Obligations can affect how high or low these taxes are. Times of war also affect the level of control in a county, which in turn affects taxes. Oh my god, why did I play this tutorial? As a ruler, you're likely to be liege of at least one vassal. Yes, I fucking know. Come on. They supply you with money and levies and fuck all. Come on. It's possible to be both a liege and a vassal. Open the realm view on the right side of the screen. Here's a list of your current vassals. At the top of the list is the ruler, whose land you can see on the map. This is an earldom inside your realm go here for an overview of things such as your vassal's current opinion of you whether they're considered a powerful vassal or not and the level of taxes and levies they're currently providing you with powerful vassals a handful of vassals with the most soldiers and highest income you need to be Pay careful attention to these vassals because they expect to hold a seat on your council and will have significantly lower opinion of you if they do not. Changing a succession law requires all, requires all powerful vassals to either have a positive opinion of you, be terrified by you, or be imprisoned. It's worthwhile keeping your vassals happy. Da, da, ba, ba. No matter how mighty a ruler your character is, if your realm reunites against you, either to depose you through war or just to murder you while you sleep, I'd like to see you try. Your reign is bound to be cut short. Some of your vassals might serve on your council, making their opinion extra important. Da -da 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 -da. There's a limit to how many vassals you can comfortably be in charge of before your realm becomes unwieldy. Going beyond this vassal limit affects taxes and levies. This doesn't matter for the tutorial, but when you start to build your own kingdom, be mindful of growing too fast. If you end up exceeding your vassal limit, you can grant a lower ranking title. You can grant lower ranking titles away to your vassals. Sometimes you can even create new higher tier titles to consolidate the power in an area and the titles under it. Your realm is a complete body of land and titles that you own, including the areas held by your vassals. For now for you, this means the counties. 
of Thomond and Ormond, when domain is used, we're instead referring to the land that you own personally, without vassals. Thomond. Domain. My land. Realm. All the land that I have. Some things that happen will only affect your domain, while others will impact your entire realm. The Duchy of Munster. Note that there's a limit to how much land you can hold personally before you start incurring penalties. The domain limit. Holy fuck tutorial. When you go above your domain limit, it can be a good idea to use the grant title interaction on characters you're friendly with, making them your vassals. Why the fuck? Why did I pick the tutorial? I've already lost all fucking patience. I have no patience for tutorials. Jesus fucking Christ, I hate this. Yeah, fuck off. Jesus fucking Christ. Managing a realm is a lot of work. As a ruler, you have the help of your council. Fuck, yeah, I fucking know. Open your council, fucking shit. Jesus fucking Christ. Counselors can be set to work, and they all do different things. You can change a counselor's task by clicking on the button near their portrait in the council view. Ugh. Schemes are long-term goals aimed at another character. Yeah, murder. Da 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 da. You can plot a murder and kidnapping and stuff. You got to get people who like you to try to help you, which makes your plot stronger, which makes it more likely to succeed. Uh, next. A good time to use a scheme might be when you find the line of succession not being as clear-cut as you'd like. One way to get ahead is to simply remove the competition. Quietly and with no witnesses. Murder schemes come with the risk of discovery. If your attempt goes awry, it will make your character unpopular, especially with your target. The sway scheme is made for increasing the opinion someone has of your character. Let's try it. Open the council view. Right click on your court chaplain. Sway. So why won't you sway? Excellent! Once set in motion, your scheme will slowly progress over time. The time before conclusion is reached will vary depending on its success chance, which can be affected by relevant skills, in this case, your diplomacy. If you're unhappy with your scheme, you can always cancel it by abandoning it. Da 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 da. Open the intrigue, inspect the schemes tag. Yep. Sometimes schemes can give rise to secrets. If you catch someone trying to commit murder, it's probably in their best interest to make sure you keep it quiet. You can also blackmail them to gain a hook. Hooks represent a favor you can call in with a partic particular character, encouraging or forcing them to do your bidding. As you play, you'll find many different ways to gain and use hooks. When you start playing, experiment with it. Let's pretend you've managed to get a hook on one of your vassals. Inspect the hooks and secrets tab. This weak hook can be used for a number of things. One is to increase the obligation set by the feudal contract you have with a feudal vassal. To access the menu for changing your feudal contract, go to your vassal list in the realm view or right click his... I'm not even registering what I'm reading at this point. Let me, let me try this again here. One is to increase obligation da, 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 to access the menu for changing your feudal contract. Go to your vassal list in the realm view or right click his portrait and choose modify feudal contract. You may notice that some interactions are not immediately visible. This is because when you have many interactions available, the character interaction menu only displays the most common ones. Click the more button. Da, da, da. I understand. War is an essential part of Crusader Kings. There are a lot of concepts to cover, but for now, let's touch briefly on some of them. Thank God, more tutorial. Fuck yes. Fuck yeah, keep teaching me all this shit I already know how to do because I'm a dumbass and picked a tutorial. The rest and the details we will let you discover as you start playing, which will be probably weeks from now at this rate. So the most important thing in any war are the battles, which are fought by armies. Most of your soldiers come from levies, but you can expand your army by employing men-at-arms. You can also hire mercenaries, provided you have the gold. Open your military thing. 
when a war starts, you'll be able to raise your armies from the screen via the Raise All Armies button. When the war is over, you'll have to disband your soldiers before starting another war. Rally points are mustering grounds for the levies and men-at-arms under your command. Uh, okay. To start a war, you'll need a legitimate reason, a casus belli, against another ruler. There are various ways to obtain a casus belli. I don't know if I'm saying that right. And I took Latin for years. I should know that. You might have de jure titles that make you the rightful liege of your target. You may inherit claims, or you could pursue holy wars against nearby infidels. Although these are the most common, there are dozens of different types of casus bellies for you to discover and use as you play. The easiest and most straightforward way to acquire claims is to use fabri Fabricate Claim on County. This is something your chaplain sees to through one of his counselor tasks. That used to be not your... I didn't think it was your chaplain that did that. Wait, that's different. Soon we'll let you unpause the game. Holy shit! You can't be serious. There are just a few things to go over first. Oh, really? Just a few? Firstly, it's important to know that there are five different speeds. Yeah, I know that. For important events, the game will auto-pause. da 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 There's a here. I know all that. Now, as a first task, let's remind your neighbor, the Earl of Desmond, who his rightful liege truly is. If it happens to expand your realm, so be it. Using the character interaction system that we went over earlier and selecting him via the map, declare war on the ruler of Desmond. You should already have a valid Casus Belli, as his title is du jour, a part of your realm. Uh... Where's Desmond? Ah. War. Declare war. You've successfully declared a war. Woo woo. Next, you should rally your armies. Pep rally time. A button has appeared on the bottom of your screen to help you, but you can also do this from your military view. Whatever your rally point is, in this case, Thomond. That's where your army will gather and await your instructions. Notice you'll have to unpause the game for your army to gather more than a handful of men. Leave it a few days and the army will form. Let's raise my armies. Raise all armies. What's it? Create new men at arms regiment? I know nothing about that. I'll figure that out later. Let's just get through this goddamn tutorial and then I'll start a new game. Between this and Wasteland 3, which, by the way, Wasteland 3 is fucking excellent so far. I, it, I, I don't have enough time to play all the games I want to play, man. Wasteland 3, Crusader Kings 3. Uh, I still got like 30 other games I still need to finish. Fucking Disco Elysium, I'm not done with yet. Uh, fuck, I still have I got Witcher. I got Witcher 3. Literally, the, the day it was released, I got Witcher 3. Still haven't beat that motherfucker. And Cyberpunk comes out in like a month. I've had that shit for years, man. And I still haven't beat it. That game is so fucking big. And it's there's just so much stuff to do. And I have OCD about shit. I can't pass things. If there's an optional quest, I have to fucking do it. And I have to do it the best fucking way possible. So I'll fucking like reload and do it again. I never finish shit. Anyways, to move your army, left click on the army and right click on the area you want them to go to. Perhaps the enemy capital barony. Alright. Bomb. Wait, where is the enemy capital barony? What is that? Wait. Go there. Yeah. I understand. Now that your army's moving, it's probably heading into battle with enemy forces. Wait, I didn't rally my army yet, did I? Do I still need to wait? This can be a head-on encounter with other armies or the start of a siege. Battles will happen automatically if two hostile armies cross paths. Sieges occur when you place an army on an enemy holding. Is that as big as my army gets? I guess so. 
Hey now, hey now, I'm trying to fight a war here. With my marriage to Petty Queen Lasan, Lasan, the realm expects us to throw a suitably extravagant wedding celebration. It's well within my right to collect a royal aid duty, <laughs> duty as a part of this, but some may consider it tasteless to levy an extra tax during a time of jubilation. Of course I'll collect it. Uh, nah, I'll have prestige. Okay. Bump. Close. Close. Alright, army. Your culture is now fascinated by the battlements innovation. I just dropped my lighter. The outcome of a battle between two armies depends on a number of things. The number of levies both sides have. Which, if any, men at arms either side is using. The commander involved, and even the terrain you're fighting on. Uh. I found it. Uh, am I winning? Come on, army. Let's speed up the game. Where, where... Wait, where's the thing to speed up the game? It used to be right here. Uh, well, I guess I should have paid attention to that. Why is this still here? Go away. How the fuck? Where are you? Oh, here he is. Come on, fellas. My army sucks. This is a long ass battle. Oh, I have it paused. What a fucking moron. Go, go away. My knight, Kelt, has been wounded and the injury runs deep. I fear that his body is not strong enough to fight this on its own. I feel death lingering by his side. You fucking wuss. He's a treacherous villain. Well, good. That's what you get, you treacherous bastard. There's nothing that can be done. Fuck it. Your army is attacking an enemy holding. Click on the highlighted icon. The spearheads. I don't... What spearhead? Oh, okay. To find out how it's going, you need to win sieges to win most wars as they increase your war score. War score in seven years ago. Whenever a siege is won, it takes a few rounds, the area will become occupied. Occupado. Changing its regular look on the map to a striped one. The color of the stripe shows who has occupied a holding. Since your color on the map is green, holdings that you have occupied have green stripes. Holding occupied by the Kingdom of France would have blue stripes, England red, etc, etc. Oh my god, to get an idea of who's winning a war, you can always look at the war score in the lower right corner. It goes from minus 100 to 100 and changes the battles, the sieges are won, and look at the well, territory is occupied. Uh, 100 war score, you can force the other side to accept your peace offer. At minus 100 war score, they can force you to accept their peace offer. All wars end in one of three ways. Victory, peace, white peace, or defeat. The exact consequences of any of these changes, depending on the causes belly used in details for a specific war, can be found by right-clicking your enemy ruler and selecting Offer Peace. Jesus Christ. I'm at plus 23. Okie dokies. Siege! The slow siege. Oh. Making progress very, very slowly, but surely. Oh, look at that. Yeah, buddy boy. Come on, fellas. Stalemate. Assault fort. Hey, my war score's at 100. You're now able to use Enforce Demands on the enemy roller. Right-click that character and select Offer Peace. Or click on the war score to open the same menu. Uh, do what now? What am 
I supposed to do? Can I enforce my demands? You gain the contested country. He becomes my vassal. Allies share, da da da. I don't think this is what it wanted me to pick, is it? Gain 40 fame. Yeah, let's do that. Congratulations on your victory! You've now experienced what it's like to make it through an essential part of the game. From now on, we'll stop the tutorial lessons appearing. You will, however, still be able to get some advice if you open them when they pop their alert at the top of the screen. Pop that alert. And this advice will elaborate on the most important things you encounter. Thanks for staying with us, and good luck. Thank you, Paradox. Sorry I bitched about the tutorial. I know not everyone has spent hundreds of hours playing Crusader Kings 2, because unlike me, other people have lives. So I'm sure it was very helpful to other people. My wisdom and mercy are legendary. I am a much greater foe than you imagined. I will comply with your demands. There are many things you can do now that you dipped your feet in the essentials. Crusader Kings is about setting your own goals. If you want a suggestion, we recommend you try to become the king or queen of Ireland. War is not the only way either. Well, that's the tutorial. Should I just quit now and start my own game with my own peeps? These guys have red beards. Maybe I should stay with them. Hmm, she's kind of... Hmm. Okay, so... Do what now? Okay, how much gold do I have? I have 800 gold. So... Am I still building shit? Uh, I wanna build shit. Sinful Prince Archbishop exposed. Prince Archbishop Gebhard lost one level of devotion. Wow. Oh, prisoner taken in siege. You captured Earl Myrdak's son and heir, Tad during the siege of Trali. Uh, in prison. He's already imprisoned. Uh, I can't, um... I can't ask for money from his dad to free. He used to be able to do that shit. Bailey constructed. Whoop whoop. Additional taxes. You gain 90. Your steward's excellent stewardship skills led to this windfall. Oh yeah, let's go to my council and see what everyone's doing. Uh, foreign affairs plus prestige. Domestic affairs plus opinion. Uh, Marshall, all right, hold on. Let's start up here. What's he doing? Religious relations plus piety. Fabricate claim. Yeah, you can do that. Uh, increased development. We'll be assigned to increased development in county. Uh, is that like, is that like increasing the technology in the old one, or am I misunderstanding that? Is that the build assist, or have they combined it? Uh, let's do that. Sure. Uh, what are you doing, buddy? Uh, chance of removing county corruption. Men at arms maintenance. Da, da, da. Train commanders. Yeah, whatever. Disrupt scheme, support scheme, find secrets. Hostile scheme resistance. Oh, let's find secrets. Okay. What's this? Yeah, I don't need that. Earldom of Thomond gained... I hate Thomond? I can't be saying that right. 
Organized service for five years, plus five taxes. The peasants in this county have been organized by a system to maximize the efficiency of their military and agricultural service. Womp. 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 Oh yeah, disband my armies. Where's my army? You go home. You're costing me money, man. I don't know. I guess I could just disband them here. I don't know why I'm making them go back where they came from. Sounded bad. I don't approve of telling people to go back where they came from. That makes you a shitty dumb person. Disband. Alrighty. Uh, Alright, so anyways, if you've played Crusader, if you've not played Crusader Kings before, so basically, you can do whatever the hell you want. Oh, I haven't even looked at the map. Oh, look how pretty the map is now. Oh my god, it's so much better. Oh shit, can you play all these places? In the old one, you, you had to have DLC to play like in Asia and why does this look like fucking Pangea or something? I guess... I guess maps probably weren't accurate in the... Well, I know they weren't. Maps were not accurate back in the Middle Ages. Oh, man. I can't wait till I level up and go fight this giant fucking lobster. Crawdad. That's one of the final... These are the final bosses. Lobster guy. Uh, dogfish. Sea serpent. They're, those are the final bosses. You gotta be really high level, though. You gotta get really good gear. Um, level up your magic skills. What's this wonky looking place? A mountain. Can you can you be the Vatican in this one? There's no Vatican. Sardinia. Gardenia. I like playing in Crusader Kings 2, I always liked playing real random ass tiny little shitty countries and trying to make them somewhat not shitty. That was fun. And I always tried to pick a different uh yeah, I'd play like a European thing, family, and then I next time I'd play like an uh, Indian dynasty, and then like a Muslim dynasty. I like to, I like to try try out all of them. You know what I mean? Rainbow Coalition Crusader Kings gameplay strategy. Uh, I'm just gonna let this play for a minute, and then I'm gonna quit, and then I'm gonna. S save and quit and then I'm probably just gonna start a new game from scratch I just wanted to check out the tutorial and see if anything was much different which it is not basically the same what is that is that little port graphics are a step up I haven't even checked do I have my settings turned up Ah, settings. Graphics. Uh, do, do, do. Medium. I should be able to play this shit on ultra settings. My new computer is a fucking beast. It's such a... Oh, I love it so much. Um... Sorry, I'm spaced out there thinking about how beautiful my computer is. If only you could see. You want to see my computer? Look at all these pretty lights. Isn't that, isn't that the prettiest goddamn thing you've ever seen? Oh my god, it's so beautiful and it's so powerful. Yeah, so anyways, let's play, I don't even know if my camera's facing the right fucking thing yet, and it doesn't matter, because no one watches this shit anyways. While performing her duties as my spy master, Bebin uncovered a secret by my kinsman, Mirkertok. The ways in which he seeks pleasure is revolting for any decent man to even think of. <laughs> There's no such thing as a decent man. Anyways, am I right, ladies? Huh? Decent man. Oxymoron. Ha <laughs> ha Fucking whatever. I don't, I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. Yet he's not merely willing but eager 
It feels so unnatural and sickening. No, it is unnatural and sickening. An offense against God. Servant, fetch me a bucket before I... Okay, let's give her a new jobby job. I can find another secret. Nah, let's disrupt schemes. No, okay, I'll keep her. I'll let her keep finding secrets. Let's play... Before I quit, I will play... I'll play to January. It's November. Uh, I guess that's only a month. We'll see if anything happens in the next month. Earl Ragnvald converted culture from Norwegian to Irish. Dude. Better get in line, buddy boy. I run a tight ship around here. Me and the monsters. Oh, wow. Well, it's already way into January. What am I doing? Well, nothing happened in that month. Yeah, uh, you know what? We played the tutorial. Let's just, uh, let's call it a, uh, not a day, because I'm going to play again here in a very little bit. Let's get a snack. I know I'm talking to nobody. I know no one watches me. I feel fucking stupid acting like anyone is, but... Uh, let's get a snack, and then let's come back and start a new game. We'll pick our own dynasty, our own country, domain thing, and we'll start from scratch. No more tutorial popping up every two seconds. We'll just play, and it'll be a good time. Good times will be had by all. Alright, it's been fun. Petty King, Mercod of Munster. And, alright. Later.